But on our campus, Kieran and Adouia, today we're going to be talking about Easy Meat by Rachel Tresize. This is Tresize's most recent work. And Rachel Tresize, for me, is a very important author. Not that I enjoy a lot of her works, because she writes predominantly short stories. And you know what I think about short stories, people? But I only came across Rachel Tresize when I was 18, and we were studying her short story, Fresh Apples. And I was surprised to read this ago. I know where this is set. I know the precise location of everywhere that is happening. And that's when I found out that Rachel Tresize is a Welsh author who grew up in the next village over from where I was living. Now, no one had ever mentioned Rachel Tresize to me growing up. No one had ever muttered the name Rachel Tresize. And then I was even more dumbfounded when I realized my sister was in the same class as Rachel Tresize, and she knew about Rachel Tresize, that she wrote books about the Rhonda, about the place that I had grown up. But, but no one had decided to tell me. Rachel Tresize came in at like the right time of my reading journey because I had gotten in to Irving Welch. I was very captivated by how he was representing the Scottish people, how he was writing in their dialect. I was very captivated by that. But Rachel Tresize has a lot of Welsh aspects. Inadvertently, I mean both the author Welsh, but also she's Welsh, therefore there's a lot of Welsh things. So seeing an author who is painfully blunt, who is telling things as straight as it is while representing the people that she is writing, because I know these characters, I speak to them on a day-to-day -day basis, I know the people who she is speaking to, I know the cadence, I know the rhythm, I understand the landscape, I understand what exactly Rachel Tresize is doing. Now you set a book in the Ron the Valleys, I'm interested. You set it on the date of the 23rd of June 2016, the day that Brexit was announced. You have yourself an interested mix because what Rachel Tresize is doing is talking about a political moment, a pivotal time in history, but akin to how Ali Smith has tackled the topic of Brexit within her seasonal quartet, there's no real politics in Easy Meat. Yes, political parties are mentioned, but they're very much in the background. They're a throwaway sentence. Easy Meat revolves around Caleb Jenkins, a marathoner ex-reality TV star who has his own problems, and that is that he's seeing the Ronda disintegrate. He is witnessing the decay that is happening within his hometown under austerity. So much so, he's not living day by day, but he is living credit card by credit card. He has had to bring his parents and brother into his house because the family business of Just Carpets, I literally know Just Carpets. It's, it's, it's ridiculous to even think that it's in a book. His family business has gone under. His mother and brother are having to live with him. But Caleb is struggling to pay the rent. He's struggling to get a job. Even though he had his 15 minutes of fame, Caleb understands that he's not as stupid, he's not as presentable as the other glamorous looking people, as the muscular looking men. He's unable to portray the banal, farcical, the you have to be gullible to believe that this is actually how people live their lives, reality TV storyline. So it's subsequently Cut. Now, the job that he grabs onto the hordes to is in a butchery facility, a slaughterhouse, and he, alongside swathes of Polish workers, work deboning cattle and carcasses. Caleb somewhat becomes the mediator for Jan and Lukas for the boss. He's just a supervisor, Morris, who is there to grind them down physically and mentally. Caleb understands that he lives in a beautiful area, but Nothing survives there. Everything dies. Businesses, the community, everything has just dissipated. And to give you a real story, so one of the big hubbubs of community, like the place that you needed to be when I was growing up, was Pont de Preeth. Pont de Preeth was manic. It was, it, all the stores were there, the park was wonderful, and I hadn't been there for about 10 years. Me and Alex decided to go to Pont de Preeth. I was like, oh, it's great. And I had been there, and but it was 
embarrassing. I truly could not understand how a place like Pont de had become a ghost town. Everything was shut up. Uh, you had B&M, which is like, like a budget shop. You had like a few charity shops dotted around. And that was it. Now, this is the place that probably had like over 100 shops. Like, it was incredible, Pont de uh, yeah, it was just like a bit heartbreaking to me. I remember we sat in one of the cafes. And I was like, I don't know how we've got from where it used to be to now. And then I visited my hometown of Triorki. Triorki High Street won the High Street of the Year. People still hold on to that. But honestly, I don't think it's making the nominations like anytime soon. It has been completely trounced. The Brexit vote is coming. People are casting their votes and me like many of my mates who I spoke to back home. You have the people who somehow seem to know it all. You have the local experts. I'll put my hand on my absolute heart and say this. When it came to Brexit, I had never considered like what the EU was. Like I didn't even like consider it as having a single impact in my life. And you had the people online be like, oh, but think about this, what the EU has done, what the EU has done, what the EU has done. And I'm thinking, I don't know, like, any of this. Like, people were talking about it, like, they used to open up the papers and be like, oh, I can't wait to read about the EU. I'm going to go out on a limb here. 96% of the great British populace have no idea what the EU does or did. And honestly, seven years after the vote, I don't think I can tell you still what they do and what they did. That's why people voted to leave. Because the current system, the one with the EU, wasn't working. Rachel Tresize shows that that vote is somewhat unimportant for people because the end of this book, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed for some people. I know the people who live in the great nation of the internet love to point fingers at people who voted leave, but Tresize shows why those people did, why those people vastly wanted to change themselves, because you could talk about EU laws, changes that Brexit has maintained, but people really only care, like if you really break it down, like across the world, you want to have a job that they're secure at, and they want to keep a roof over their head. And I think a lot of people will forgo a lot of things as long as those two instances are fulfilled. A secure job and keeping a roof over your head and feeding your family. They are the only things that people care about. I completely understand it. And I think the Easy Meat is almost like a testament to those people to show that they're not all... Like how people, I hate when people do this, I hate that the media's gone. They were uninformed. Oh, they're stupid. Oh, they only think about themselves. Oh, they're racist. Oh, they're bigoted. They're hungry and they're struggling. They're hungry and they're struggling. I think Easy Meat is a wonderful Brexit novel because the majority of people are apolitical because the politics never works in their favour.